Aaron, it's been three months since we closed society. How do you feel? I feel that I am learning what it means to have free time again. I feel like I am learning new things about you and our marriage. And I feel like I'm learning new things about myself. Who am I? What is my purpose in this world? Why am I here? Let's talk about me. You said you learned a lot of things about me. The way you said it made it sound bad. What did you learn about me? No, I think I learned good things about you. I learned that you are good at handling the business side of running a business. For instance, you took care of all of the money aspects. You were there for the day-to-day -day operations of running Snow Society. You took care of our employees. You were there for the customers. I think you did a good job overall. I thought you meant that you learned stuff about me within these three months. Oh, no. Sorry. I meant during the time in society. During the past three months, I learned that you love movie pass, that you love to hang out with your friends. I think the overarching theme is I love my freedom. I love my freedom post society. I love post society. So therefore, that's how I spend my time. Do you feel like you're a new person, a new creation, a new <laughs> creature, if you would? <laughs> I don't feel like I'm new. I feel a bit rejuvenated. I still feel like we haven't, I haven't truly relaxed since post society. I think because I had all these goals and things I wanted to do for the past three months that I don't feel like the need that I just have to sit. Because I know during society, I felt pretty overwhelmed that I just wanted to sit. Like that's all I wanted to do. But now I feel good. I feel like, yeah, I'm ready to do other stuff. No, you're right. We have stayed busy post Snow Society. I feel that now we're finally starting with a blank slate because we've just been keeping up with different activities. Once we ended Snow Society, we told everybody that we were going to Disney World. Can you remember anything about that? I remember that I had a time of my life at Disney World. It was so good. We were there for how many days? I think eight days. We flew at night and then we arrived in the morning and we went straight to get breakfast. A buffet. A buffet at like 7 a.m., which meant it was like 4 a.m. in California time. It was just so good. I can, I can recount a lot of things and we'll talk about it because it's going to take forever, but it was, a, it was a really good trip. I do have one travel tip for everybody that wants to go to Disney World eventually, and that is... You Don't go with your kids. I was going <laughs> to say that. I was going to say that you need to be... It's good, right? I guess so, yeah. No, my travel tip would be to participate in the meal ticket program. Is that what it's called? Meal tickets? Dining options? Disney a, dining. Yeah, Disney dining package. Oh, we got so owned with that. I, I, think I gave we did in. Well. It's true, but I gave in to buying it first. Okay, so first, there's like three dining packages, and this came with our hotel vacation package. So I thought, okay, let's get the middle tier because it means we can go to the restaurants they want to go. But then after I looked at all the restaurants that are like popular and that are are must like tries, I realized, okay, we can't get the middle tier because that means we can only like try like a third of what's on our list. In order to be able to try all the restaurants, you have to get the highest tier. So I ended up getting the highest tier. Well, do you regret it? I don't regret it. I just can't believe we, we did it and like we gave in. But you know what? We would have done it anyway. Like tried those restaurants. So. It was the best option. Do you have any travel tips for our listeners? My travel tip. Okay, so I realized that we were planning our day based on whichever park had the magic hour thinking, okay, that's the best use of our time because we get an extra hour. But then thinking about it, the magic hour is available to everyone who stays at the resort or at least some resorts. And that's still a lot of people. So I'm thinking even though there's magic hour, that park is going to be super crowded still because it's going to be like all the hotel guests are going to want to go there. So I think next time if I go, I'll try to plan it where we don't have to be at that specific park just because it has a magic hour. Also, I would say don't get the park hopper, which we did not, because it takes like an hour to travel everywhere. It took a long time for us to get to the park or get to Disney Springs or to just another hotel. It truly is a Disney world. I was so surprised there's so many resorts there. Well, thank you for planning, Jess. 
I appreciate that vacation. I think it's going to go down in history as one of our most memorable vacations ever. Thanks. That along with the rest of our Disney vacations, I suppose. You're welcome. I, I didn't buy anything in this trip. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. This is the first Disney trip I didn't buy anything. And it was like Florida. It's kind of like, well, we have it here in California. You were going to buy an alien light-up necklace. Yes. But I ended up not because I think I found it online. So I was like, oh, we can get this at home. And when we went to Disneyland. We found it. We did find it. You bought something, though. What did I buy? You didn't buy something Disney-related. My flower shirt from Uniqlo? Yeah. My new favorite shirt. Can you describe this shirt? Well, it's just a regular t-shirt with a flower on it. Flowers on it. But it's it was in the women's section. It's like feminine pastel flowers. It's my new favorite shirt. I bought it at Disney Springs. Disney Springs is like the downtown Disney of Disney World. We also watched a movie at Disney Springs mm -hmm. on our last day. Avengers. Infinity War. It, it was, was amazing. Movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. It was a good movie. And the reason why we watched this movie was because... We had a movie pass. But either way, we would have watched it without a movie pass. I feel that movie pass has changed our lives. For instance, we watch about one movie a week or more. I feel like it's helping me be artistic. What? <laughs> that makes... What do you mean? I think the movies we see, not all of them, but a lot of the ones I, I've seen that I would not normally see without a movie pass. For example, American Animal. American Animals. American Animals. Tully. Those are all pretty cinematic films. But you're not a movie maker. No, but I feel like I could still learn from these cinematic movies. I get what you're like saying. Like the way it was written, it makes me think more. You know, it's just the way... That's, I don't know any film terms. But I think... It has helped me. So what you're trying to say is, is that different forms of art inform the way you make your art. Yeah. So you're telling me that when you listen to music, that changes the way you make your art? I have to really be active about it, though. Like, I am going to watch this film in a way where it's going to affect my art. Then I will take it seriously in a different way. You sleep through a lot of the movies, though. I do fall asleep <laughs> on several movies, but... I'm still there. Like, I wake what? up and then... What do you mean you're still there? You're not there when you're falling asleep. No, I'm, I'm right there. I'm you right asked me, you. what happened? What happened? It's hard. You know, okay, this is why I fall asleep a lot. I fall asleep because when I'm not doing anything, I get tired. Like, if I just sit, I'm going to get tired. I always have to do something. I think that's why I feel like I always have to do something. And when I'm not doing anything, it's like, okay, I'm so just sleepy. Okay, even though I keep busy and I'm doing a lot of things, it doesn't mean I'm not tired. I can sleep for a very long time. But if I keep being productive and I keep being busy, then like there's no time to sleep. You were supposed to be on sabbatical. And I suppose that, sure, you can just sleep as you wish because you're on your sabbatical. But you're not really on a sabbatical. You took on other projects. So I don't know if I truly consider this a real sabbatical. This is like a sabbatical from doing stuff for other people. And that's true. That is what I did. I didn't do things for other people until the end of the month. Then I started taking on projects, but I didn't start on the projects until after my sabbatical. Well, one thing that you did do for yourself is you took a cake decorating <gasps> class. Yes. I took a cake class with Kirsty. It was every Monday. It was like 60 bucks for a 10-week course. A three-hour class it was such a good deal. We took it at at one of the Alhambra Community Center, and we our focus was on buttercream. So we just learned how to buttercream a cake, buttercream flowers. It was really good. We're going to do it again in the fall. It's going to be marzipan. What's marzipan? I don't know. I'll find out. I have also been trying to brush up on my culinary skills. Actually, not really brushing up, more like trying to learn them. I've cooked a couple meals so far with your assistance. I'm now Chef Aaron. <laughs> my first meal was spaghetti and uh -huh. meatballs. I think my second meal was chicken it, and it rice. Was, it wasn't no and no. What? Your first meal was spaghetti with ground beef. And it was spaghetti sauce in a jar. It was a good intro. Your second meal was fettuccine alfredo with sauce from a jar. Your third meal was a chicken. There's nothing wrong with sauce from a jar. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think, though, your next meal that you plan with spaghetti, you should try and make your own sauce. I don't think you should just stick with a jar. 
I think, yeah, there are times when it's fine. But I think if you want to grow as a chef, Chef Aaron, you should try making it from scratch. So you're telling me I need to grow my own tomatoes. And I you're think telling you need... me I need to grow my own garlic. Are you serious? No. Grow as a chef. You grow your skills. You learn new skills. And that part of it is just making your own sauce from scratch. It's not that hard. Do you know how to make your own sauce from scratch? Well, actually, I, just, I still need to use a recipe. Well, <laughs> but, who, but you need a recipe too. A lot of people need recipes. But yeah, you just look at the recipe. You buy all the ingredients. And you just follow instructions. That's why I did my cake class. That's why I was able to make a cake. I'm just trying to learn, okay? I'm not very... I'm a nurse by profession, you know? That's very, like, clinical, medical-related field. These other activities where I'm supposed to use my hands, like cooking, I suppose I need to put a little bit more time and effort if I'm to grow mm. in them. I see that. I appreciate you wanting to learn how to cook, though, and I appreciate you cooking for us and our friends. I think it's a good thing to have, and I think it helps our family. We recently went camping with some of our friends, and we were in charge of the lunch meal. Mm. Oh my gosh. I don't know what it was. Okay, the week before we went to a retreat that Aaron played music for, a different church. And one of the meals, the pastor ordered us some Korean fusion rice bowl from On and On Kitchen, I think. And I was inspired by that. It was just a lot, it was like a hodgepodge of stuff. It's just stuff in a bowl of rice. It's just stuff. So you're telling me that you try to copy that meal oh yes 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 yes. i like the idea of the like mod podge of like ingredients and then you kind of just make your own bowl like a poke bowl oh without the fish i think the correct term is hodgepodge oh you're right mod <laughs> mod podge is an adhesive <laughs> a hodgepodge of ingredients did you enjoy camping you know what we didn't camp because we didn't stay the night we didn't go camping we went to the mountains i'm not much of a camper I'm not really an outdoorsy type of guy. Maybe I should be. No, we don't like to get dirty. When we went to the campsite, that was like the first time I just sat and did nothing. What do you mean? Like during the, my whole sabbatical, I never just sat. No TV, no phone, and we just talked with our friends. Did you feel naked without your phone? No. And I didn't feel like stressed out because I know I still have a lot of things to do, but I didn't feel stressed out like, oh, I have so much to do, but I'm here like on this campsite just sitting here. I did not fall asleep. Oh, I did fall asleep. I'm sorry. You could have used that time to plan for this party that you have coming up. I was asked to do decorations for a one-year-old event. A one-year-old birthday party. Oh, I'm sorry. I was asked to do decorations for a one-year-old birthday party. The theme is based off a Korean song. I think it's like um, Bunny Mountain. It's like a Bunny Mountain song. So I'm combining a lot of bunny <laughs> bunnies and florals and flowers and I made some DIY stuff the colors are pink purple I'm going to do some face painting my friend Kirstie's gonna do some balloon making with like a package what do you hope to accomplish with this party this is my first freelance event that I'm doing and I'm pretty excited about it a lot of this event compared to other events is that I'm taking this more seriously and professionally in the way like I'm using my time like, I'm, I'm really designating some times in order to work at this event to really calculate how long it takes me to gather all the decorations, plan it, and to make things. So in that sense, I feel like I'm trying to manage my time a little bit better and to see how long it really takes me to plan an event like this. Are you going to be doing more one-year-old parties in the future, or is this a one-off thing? Um, I hope so. I mean, it does take a lot of time. She asked me if I can do the decorations, like, two months ago, so it's kind of been on my mind for two months. So in that sense, it's kind of like, oh, it's something I have to do. But it's something I'm still excited about. But it's just like lingering, you know. Until like the event's done, I won't feel at ease. I get what you mean. Recently, Warren and I played a show in Little Tokyo. And for some reason, I was way more nervous about this show than I had been about other ones. How come you were so nervous? I don't know. Maybe it's the same thing that you're talking about. It was just kind of sitting there in the back of my mind. And even though we had a short set, I just felt that a lot was riding on that time that I had to perform. Out of all the shows you've done, would you say that this is on the top of your show list? I do think that we got better with every single show that we've played. And so, yes, I believe that this was our best performance. What did you think? I thought it was good. You introduced like two new songs, I think. This one, you guys talked a lot less. And 
I think you guys are just trying to play as many songs as you can during the set list. But I think you guys did well. It was a very different crowd. A lot of the other artists were spoken word. I felt that the crowd was calmer than usual, but I'm okay with that. That's true. You guys were still keeping up with your performance and like doing your solos and like kind of dancing your silly dance. And then when I was looking in the crowd, we're just kind of like enjoying the music and listening. It was that type of crowd. I yeah, think it's I mean, fine. Yeah, I mean, nobody's there to have a dance party. Yeah, but you guys still kept up with your performance. That was Thanks. good. Yeah, I think you, you make a good point, though. I did have a guitar solo every song, and maybe that's the reason why I was a little bit more nervous. Those two new songs, they will be up on Spotify soon. I think your song Suffocate might be my favorite song of yours. Oh, perfect. That will be the first song that you'll see up in a little bit. I've been using my time to do a lot more recording. I recorded Angie and Philip recently. I'm glad to be using my time post society to work on more music. What are your goals? Are you doing like an album or like a single? I think my goal is just to get back into the groove of recording, of having people over, being more of a producer, and just putting out more content. I just want to be creating. We are going to finish our magazine tonight, our annual magazine. Every year on our wedding anniversary, we send out a magazine to our family and friends that kind of just highlights what we've been doing the past year. This idea was actually from my cousin Emily. She said she wanted to do it for herself and her family, and I thought, wow, that's a great idea. So we started doing it after our first anniversary, and we've just been keeping it up. And I, I really like it. I feel like I'm forgetful. Our years can be very, it can come and go. So I think this is something for me to just remember what we've been doing. Okay, so our first issue was like, this is, we got married and these are like all my, our wedding photos. Our second issue was we bought this condo. So we bought a house. No, we bought a home. Our third issue announced that we were planning to adopt. Our fourth issue was that we bought Snow Society. We started owning a Pokemon Boba shop. And I feel like this issue... Maybe because we've been like, there's like a huge highlight, in my opinion, for every issue. I feel like this issue needs a highlight, but maybe this is the first year we don't have a highlight. It's just, it's our normal life. But then what's going to be next year's issue? 